the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Later in tonight's program, our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, will have a special announcement for homeowners, future homeowners as well as present. Please have a pencil and paper handy. This is America's finest plan for home ownership, and it offers so many advantages in economy and security that you will surely want to write down the instructions for getting further information. Get ready for the good news on America's finest plan for home ownership. <laughs> Tonight's FBI file, Flowers for the Corpse. Professional thieving is a business. And some forms of it, just as some forms of legitimate business, are conducted on a nationwide scale with accomplices in major cities throughout the country acting as sales outlets for the stolen goods. But your FBI, one of whose jobs it is to smash these rings, also operates on a nationwide scale. And no matter how cunning the methods of the one, they are no match for the unrelenting vigilance of the other. And it is inevitable, as illustrated in tonight's case from the files of your FBI, it is inevitable that sometime, at some point, the twain shall meet. The greenhouse floral business operated by Merrill Sheridan and his widowed aunt in the suburbs of a large Midwestern city had, until a few months ago, produced only a modest income. Then it began to prosper smartly. But at the moment, this sudden financial success means nothing to Merle Sheridan. He stands forlornly in his greenhouse, contemplating a flower. Merle? Oh, Merle? Uh, yes, Aunt Kathy? Well, I thought you were coming into the house for lunch. I was. Is something wrong? Yes, it's this iris. Oh, what about it? I'm convinced it deliberately committed suicide. But I thought it was doing so well. It was. Well, perhaps you can revive it. I wouldn't give the stupid thing another chance. Oh, oh look, look, isn't that, isn't that Mr. Durham outside? Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm sorry to say. Why, Merle, he's our most profitable customer. I appreciate him, darling, but I don't trust him. Well, good morning. Oh, good, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Durham. I would have gotten here sooner, but traffic in the city was extraordinarily Mr. heavy. Mr. Durham, yes? you obviously received my telegram. Oh, uh, yes. You said you had a rare variety of tulip bulb that I might be interested in, correct? Yes. I'll watch the office, Merle. Very well, Aunt Kathy. May I see the rare specimen? Certainly. Here we are. Well, let me look at it. Don't be impatient. I'll handle it. Here, cup your hand. Very well. That's it. Now I shall pull its false bottom out by the roots. Thusly, and... Good Lord, Sharon. Does it please you? Why, it's one of the most beautiful emeralds I've seen. It's the late property of some plushy dowager, I'd say. Why, it's... It's at least 20 carats. And Kathy and I will settle for 25,000. Well, I'll... I'll do the best I can. You'll probably sell it for twice that, but remember, you will still get... Only your usual one-third share. Now, look here, Sheridan. I've told you before... You're entitled to a larger share. I know. This is a precarious enterprise for all of us. But I've spent nearly 20 years building my business. And if I'm caught in just one of these transactions, what happens to the house of Durham and where am I? And Kathy and I will see to it that you have fresh flowers in your cell every day. Now, see here. That's enough. Just dash on back to the house of Durham, old dear, and do the best you can for one-third. <laughs> Thank you. 
The same morning in that city's field office of the FBI, agent in charge Craig was sitting at his desk when Special Agent Highland entered from the teletype room. Good morning, Mr. Craig. Hello, Highland. What have you got there? Special bulletin to all field officers from Washington. Oh, what's up? A series of jewel robberies. Three cities along the eastern seaboard, one right after the other. Sounds like the work of one gang. Yes, here's the bulletin. Mm -hmm. None of the stuff is turning up in the cities where it was stolen, so the police figure the gang is fencing it out around the country. I don't see any description of the stuff here. There's a follow-up teletype coming in. Quite a long list. I see. I don't imagine any of the stones are in their original mounting now, though. No, jewel gangs are usually smart enough to unmount the stones before trying to dispose of them. They're harder to identify that way. And reduces the chances of finding them to about one in a million, too. Well, don't be so pessimistic. You said there's quite a long list of it, right? Yeah, but I also... All the FBI has to do is find just one piece of the jewelry or just one of the stones. But the tough part is finding that one stone. I know, and maybe none of this stuff will ever turn up in our particular bailiwick, but we've got to go on the assumption that it will, so let's get busy. What first? For start, let's alert the police, all pawn shops, and all insurance companies which insure jewelry. Right. Hello? Hello, Sheridan? Oh, hello, Durham. I've just deposited my personal check for $20,000 to your bank account. For what? I sold the stone for $30,000 and kept my one-third $10,000. is not that good news? No. Why not? A little birdie told me you collected $6,000 more as federal luxury tax. Well... Didn't you? Well, yes, but... Then deposit $4,000 of it to my account at once. Now, look, the tax money belongs to the You're government. You're not paying taxes on stolen gems, and you know it. Sheridan, I told you I wanted more than one-third share, and I'm keeping that $6,000 as a bonus until you're ready to revise our agreement. What kind of flowers do you want? Never mind threatening me. Listen, Durham. Well? All right. Keep your bonus. That's just what... What? I've just decided that from now on we're going to do business on a different basis. What do you mean? I'll fix the amount that Aunt Kathy and I are to have, and you pay it to us in cash on the spot then whatever you sell the article for later is your business. How's that? But what if I don't agree with your price? You can take it or leave it. Very well. Good. And we'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'll have an article by then that will be worth $10,000 to Aunt Kathy and me, so bring that much cash with you. But what if You I... will not be obligated to buy, but just be prepared to. And make it about 1 o'clock. I'll be there. You sent for me, Mr. Craig? Yes, Island. You were kind of pessimistic yesterday, weren't you, about our chances of ever finding any of those stolen jewels? Well, yes. I've just had an interesting telephone call. You don't mean one of them has turned up already? One of the stolen jewels described on that list was a 20-carat emerald, wasn't it? Yes. An insurance company that we alerted yesterday just phoned to report that they've been asked to insure a 20-carat emerald. What? It was brought to them by Mrs. V.A. Madison. Her husband is the head of the Power and Light Company. No, but you don't think that either he or his wife are buying a stolen emerald? No, they wouldn't have to know it had been stolen. He purchased the emerald yesterday. Where? Why don't you go ask him? I'm on my way now. Good afternoon, ma'am. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Durham. What can I do for you? I have an appointment with your nephew. Oh, yes. He's back in the greenhouse. Shall I go uh, No, him? no, I'll find him. Sheridan! Sheridan! Don't shout, oh. Mr. Durham. Uh, Sheridan, you said you'd have an article for me to look at. That's right, I did. Well? I also told you it would cost you $10,000 in cash. Provided I want to buy it. Are you prepared to? Certainly. I don't see anything green that isn't a plant, old boy. All right, here's the money. Look at it. How much is there? $10,000. I can't afford to trust you anymore. It's much too expensive. Well, here, count it yourself. I'd be delighted. One, two, three. All hundreds? Each of those packages contains $1,000. Fine. Then I'll take four of them. Huh? Here. 
You may have the rest back. What are you doing? Just evening the score, that's all. What? My dear fellow, you held out $4,000 on me yesterday, didn't you? Oh, I get it. This was all just a trick. A rather clever one, don't you think? Give me back that money. Not a chance, old dear. Now I must look after the petunia. Why, you... Please go away before I sick the snapdragons on you. Either you give me back that money this minute, Sheridan, or... or you'll do what? I'll tell the police that you commissioned me to sell a 20-carat emerald for you yesterday. Really? And after I had innocently incriminated myself, you confessed that it was stolen and offered me more stolen jewels to get rid of. That would be very unwise. Look, I want to get out of this business anyway. You keep the $4,000. I'm going to the police. Just a minute, Mr. Durham. What? You're not going to make trouble for us. Get out of my way. Sorry. <gasps> Thank you, Aunt Kathy. You're so considerate. And now, before the FBI file on flowers for the corpse resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, I heard the inspiring story of a young hero who gave his life trying to save someone else's home, trying to save people trapped in a burning building. Not long before his death, this gallant young man had started to purchase a home for his own family under the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Thanks to his foresight, his widow didn't inherit a mortgage. She inherited a home she now owns free and clear. You see, the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan offers home buyers these five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. And besides, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned in full to the widow along with a canceled mortgage. Two, a special cash fund is built up ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, this cash fund increases as the mortgage shrinks. It can be used to shorten the term of the mortgage, pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in as little as 14 years, saving six years' interest. Four, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Five, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission or bonus charges. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, Get complete information on the Assured Home Ownership Plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now... Back to the FBI file, Flowers for the Corpse. Professional jewel thieves and their accomplices, so often glamorized by authors of mystery adventure fiction and endowed with almost supernatural talents, are neither glamorous nor supernatural to your FBI or to law enforcement agencies cooperating in their capture. To them, they're just another lot of criminals, just another patch of scum fouling the waters of decent society and just as vulnerable as any other kind of criminal. At about the time the jeweler Durham was making his fatal visit to the Sheridan Greenhouse, Special Agent Highland of the FBI was concluding his visit to V.A. Madison, purchaser of the stolen emerald. A little later, accompanied by Agent in Charge Craig, he visited Durham's office. 
I'm sorry, but Mr. Durham isn't in. Are you his secretary? Yes. Well, then perhaps you can help us. We're special agents of the FBI. The, the FBI? That's right. But, but what... It's about a stone which Mr. V.A. Madison purchased here a couple of days ago, a 20-carat emerald. Well, what about it? Mr. Durham told Mr. Madison he had obtained the stone through the liquidation of an estate that same day. Yes, that's true. We've just checked, and there is no record of any such estate liquidation. What? But the emerald exactly fits the description of one stolen in an eastern city recently. Good heavens, what? there must be some mistake. I'm afraid the mistake is Mr. Durham's in knowingly receiving and disposing of stolen goods. Now, where did he really get the emerald? I don't know. Has he gotten other stones the same way? Well, yes. I mean, that is... We're I... convinced Mr. Durham is dealing with agents of a ring of jewel thieves, miss. Well, if he is, I don't know it. They don't come Ray. here. And... Yeah. I found this on Durham's desk. What? Flowers are my hobby, you know, and this is a Dutch variety of tulip bulb. Well, what about it? Well, it's not only an odd place for a tulip bulb to be, but this is a very odd bulb. What do you mean? Take hold of the roots at the bottom and pull. That's it. Well, what... Well, the, the bottom comes out. Yeah, and the bulb is hollow inside. Oh, for the love of Pete. What do you know about this, miss? I didn't know that about it. What do you mean? Well, I mean, Mr. Durham buys a lot of tulip bulbs. From but whom? A greenhouse out in Millville. Yes? Every time they have some of a certain special variety, they let Mr. Durham know. I'll say it's a special variety. Sounds like the florist could be the fence. Sure, and hides the stuff in hollow tulip bulbs. What's the name of that greenhouse, miss? It's uh, Sheridan's. Highland, I'll stick here and wait for Durham. Right. And since you speak the flower language... I'll get out there and start speaking it right now. Aunt Kathy? Yes? I think we should be getting out of here. Merle, running away is just the thing not to do. Uh, darling, after all, you have committed a murder, and I believe there's a law against that sort of thing. But closing up the greenhouse and running away would immediately pin suspicion on us. Then what is your idea, my sweet? To dispose of Durham's body and his car. Hmm. How, when, and where? We'll drive up to the cabin tonight, lock the body in the car, and roll it into the lake. And Kathy, you're a genius. I would never have... <laughs> Wait. Well, what's the matter? Someone just drove up. What of it? Probably a customer. He's no regular customer. I've never seen him before. Well, we can't turn him down because of that. But suppose I have to take him back in the greenhouse. He won't know there's a body hidden under the benches unless you tell him. Oh. How do you do? Hello. What can we do for you? I'd like to get a few tulip bulbs, please. Some what? Tulip bulbs, Merle. Oh, oh, yes. Well, um, if you'll tell me what kind you want, I'll go back in the greenhouse. Well, that's and... all right. I'll come with you, if I may. Well... Take the gentleman back, Merle. I'll watch the office. Come this way, please. Surely. After you. Thank you. Any particular variety you're interested in? Uh, Pride of Harlem is my favorite Dutch bulb. Oh? Oh, yes. The reason I came here, a friend of mine who trades with you recommended your place to me. Who's that? Pardon? Your friend, I mean. The jeweler, J.P. Durham. Just a minute. Yes? Who are you and what do you want here? Well, uh, I don't understand. You're lying to me. You're no friend of Durham's and you didn't come here to buy tulip bulbs. You're making my work awfully easy for me, Mr. Sheridan. What? So I may as well admit now that I'm not a friend of Durham's. I'm a special agent of the FBI. FBI? And I'm not concerned with the bulbs themselves, but the jewels that you conceal inside some of them. Look here. Furthermore, I'd like an explanation for what looks like blood on the floor over there. Also, the car outside with the monogram JPD on the door. You'd better put uh, your hands what? up, Mr. What? FBI. Thanks again, Aunt Kathy. Merle, I think we'll have two passengers in that car up at the lake tonight. What time is it, Brian? Uh, 5.35, why? 
Highland should have reported back here by now. Maybe he had trouble finding the place. Shouldn't have had too much trouble. He knew the name of the town and the name of the greenhouse owner. Well, maybe he wasn't in and Highland is waiting for him. There wouldn't be any sense in calling us unless he had some information. No, perhaps you're right, but... But what? I don't like the whole setup. What do you mean? Well, in addition to not hearing from Highland, we can't find Durham. Mm, I'm not exactly crazy about that part of it myself. He's mixed up in this, and if he's running out, I don't want to give him too much of a lead. If he's running out, and the man who owns the greenhouse isn't in, maybe they're both taking the trip together. Yeah. Well, one thing is sure. What's that? We're not doing anybody any good sitting around here. Let's get out to that greenhouse. Merle? Hmm? Did you get Durham's body in the car? Yes. I didn't realize my own strength. Is, uh, is there anything else we have to do? Not that I can think of. Well, then, I think we'd better be going. It's a long drive to the cabin, and the FBI is no one-man organization, you know. What do you mean? Oh, well, they'll be sending some other men along to look for this one when he doesn't show up. You're right. I'll be ready to go in a minute. What are you doing there, Mr. FBI? Uh, nothing. Just rearranging some of the flowers. Well, what are you doing that for? Well, I'm rather fond of flowers myself, and the colors you had in this centerpiece bothered me. We're not interested in what bothers you. Mm, I always heard that they allowed the condemned man to do what he liked during the last hours. Stop fixing those flowers. Merle. What? Uh, did you check the gas and oil in Durham's car? It won't be a very good idea to be stopping anywhere with our passengers. Everything is taken care of. Let's go. <laughs> Sure seems deserted, Craig. Yeah. Got your flash? Right here. Let's see if we can get in the greenhouse and have a look around. Try this door here. Oh. Well, didn't bother to lock up anyway. No. Throw your light around. Come on. Let's take a walk down this aisle and see what we can Craig. No? Yeah? Look. Yeah. Looks like blood. I hope it's not Highland's blood. Wait a minute. Shine your light over there. What is it? Highland's identification card. What? It was lying on the table with this bunch of flowers. Say, those flowers seem to be arranged in a special way. Yes, and I've got a hunch it's supposed to mean something. You think Highland managed to leave us some kind of clue? Yes, he knew his flowers, and flowers have special meanings. Uh, what kind of these? I think one of them's a verbena. Yeah. Yeah, my wife planted something to make a border. Let's get on a phone and call the Daily Journal's library and find out what a verbena means. Right. And if that doesn't tell us enough, we'll find out what these others mean and get the whole story. <sighs> this is getting to be a bore. Now, Merle, just relax. After all, we can't roll a car and two bodies into the lake as long as that that moonstruck couple is parked down there. Well, you'd think they would have had enough smooching in two hours. Wait a minute, I believe that... Yes, they are. They're driving off now. Thank heaven. Well, Mr. FBI? I think I know what you mean. You'll please walk out of the cabin to the car and get in beside the late Dr. Durham. Well, I guess the message I left for my associates to find has failed me. What do you mean? What message? The flowers you made me drop. And my identification card you didn't see me drop. What? Surely you know the language of flowers. The verbena meant pray for me. That was to let them know I was in your power. And the milkwort means hermitage, which they could easily translate into this isolated cabin of yours. Very clever. But I'm afraid they wouldn't know where this cabin is. Your friends and neighbors do, and they'd gladly cooperate with the FBI. Then, Aunt Kathy, I'd say let's get this over with and move away from here. Yes. Get up from there and start for the door. Okay. Got that gun. Oh. Oh. Craig, am I glad to see you. We finally figured out your message, Highland, but we were afraid we'd be too late. It is too late for Durham. And it could have been for me unless... Well, do you know what smooching is? Why? I'm very thankful for it.
tried on the more serious charge of murder, Merle Sheridan's aunt was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. Her nephew received a long term in a federal penitentiary for receiving and disposing of stolen goods. And the arrest of these two led eventually to the apprehension of the gang of jewel thieves, all of whom are now serving prison terms. Yes, professional thievery is a business, operating sometimes on a nationwide scale. But likewise, the law operates on a nationwide scale. And no matter how cunning the methods of the one, they are no match for the unrelenting vigilance of the other. And it is inevitable, always, that sometime, at some point, the twain shall meet. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. But first, let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure proof. To get the full story, talk to an Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives all details. You'll find him in your local phone book under the name Equitable, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Friendly Killers. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. Now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Friendly Killer. On this is your FBI. Have you ever been hungry, really hungry, so hungry that it hurts? It's an unpleasant sensation even for a few hours. Well, imagine how it is to feel that way month after month, to live for years on a starvation diet. And then remember that right now, 500 million people in the world are desperately hungry. Millions of them will die unless we send them whatever food we can spare. Support your local food collection campaign or send a contribution direct to Emergency Food Collection, New York City. That's Emergency Food Collection, New York City. Give so the starving may live. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>